Hi everybody, Jo here again. I thought we'd have a, another little catch up and a bit of a, a crafty session. So I hope you're feeling well. I hope, um, I hope things are going okay for you. I must just say thank you to my uh, new subscribers. Honestly, in the comments that you leave, it is lovely, thank you. I thought I'd better say that because you know what I'm like once I get creating. I forget everything and just lose myself in the world that is craft. Um, so thank you for joining me today. It's always lovely to spend time with you. I do find it an absolute privilege that I get to spend to spend some time with you. Today we're going to make this. Um, as you know, I love sort of clean and simple cards, but I love ones with depth. And we've got some lovely white space here, but also we've got some layers here and some depth. And we're just going to keep it to a really simple colour palette. Um, I'm learning to love green. As you know, I'm a bit of an orange fan, so it's good to just go with something a bit different. Now, I'm going to start with a piece of card, and this is five and a half inches square, just because um, I tend to use six by six cards a lot. So this is perfect for my six by six um, card blank and and the grey I find for posting for, for giving um, it's just a size I like to use now the stamps we're going to use we're going for this stamp set now I have used this before the flourish and this is by all in create number 269 and it's one of Bipasha's and we're just going to use a couple of the as you know I like to I mean obviously this cries that's got to be a Christmas card, hasn't it? That's Mr. Robin. Um, you wouldn't even need to do a lot with that. I'm thinking vintage. Maybe stamp it in brown. Must have a go at that. And then just a bit of watercolour. That would be stunning. Um, maybe turn these into a, like a type of poinsettia. Artistic licence. It can be what you want. Make these into berries. I think perfect Christmas card. So I'm going to use these two here. It's nice just to look at all the other stamps. I mean, that. I wonder if you could use that on a Christmas card as well. You can tell what I'm thinking off for workshops, can't you? We, we've got to start Christmas early this year. So that's what I'm going to be using. But to start off with, I'm just going to make my frame. So I'm going to use a low tack tape. Now, again, I have bought in the past um, special offers on what I think is low tack tape and it's torn my card. So for me, um, I've just got a couple that I find useful. I mean, again, you probably find companies if you've got companies that you can use. Um, so I favour either sweet poppy stencils or sticks too. And I always write in mine just in case I've got one of my almost more inexpensive ones that aren't very good. I like to know which one I'm using. And I just find it easier to turn my card and just follow that edge, have it towards me, follow that edge, press my tape down. Now, obviously, if you've got a square stencil, you could use that, an aperture stencil, but we're just going to go for our low tack tape. And then what I'm going to do is I've got a stencil brush here and I'm going to use two colours. I've got crushed olive, my nice lighter green, and I've got rustic wilderness for my darker green. And I'm just going to take the lids off both so I've got them here. And I'm going to start by just dabbing in to my rustic wilderness. I always take some off on my mat. I almost use my mat as a palette, as you know. And I'm going to start by blending some ink around the edge and I always come start at the corners and make sure you go on your, your tape first. You have less chance of getting a line then and just nice blending motion round. I'm going to ink up again on the corner because I want my corners darker. And then again, we're just going to just a nice little, we don't want too much ink. We're just making that frame. Again. Don't go straight on the card. You'll get used to this and see just how much ink you need. Wants to be a bit darker, doesn't it? The others are darker. Yeah, and we'll just blend down this edge here. Let's have a look at those. Check I'm in shots. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll go on to some stamping now. Just get my stamp mat. And I've got the two stamps I'm going to use. 
And for the stamping, I'm going to use two colours of the Versafine Clay. I'm going to use the black, the Nocturne, but I'm also going to use the Shady Lady. Again, this just will help build up that depth. And we'll come in with this one first. And again, I'm just having my block on the side. I'm afraid I can't stamp like this. I have to stamp on the side. So do bear with me. We'll start off with the old shady lady and we'll put one up the side here. And again, because you've got the lip where the masking tape is, just do give a good press on this edge. It doesn't matter if you don't get it all because you're fading out and adding some ink there. But just be mindful if there is a lip, you will have to just press that bit harder. And then we'll add one at the other side and let's just frame it to start off with. And again, it's nice to have it off the page. Oh, my elbow cracked then. Sorry if you heard that. Hopefully you didn't. Probably a sign of old age. What can I say? <laughs> so again, give it a good press. And remember, your blocks are flexible, so flex it. Like I say, it hasn't quite caught here, but that doesn't matter. I'll just add some ink and it'll look nice because it's fading out anyway. So let's just add one of these in the middle. I think I'll just alter the angle, bit of variety. And then I'm going to come in with my other little stamp. Now, if you're not sure where to stamp here and you're worried about it getting almost too much of a pizza, too messy, remember you've got your acetate and you can always just use your acetate to see. Now, you see, you could move that there and it just gives you an idea of where, oh, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? So it does give you an idea of where to stamp. So make sure you use that acetate. I'm going to carry on with my green and just do a couple of these in the green just to add a bit more detail in the background. So I fancy that one just there, don't I? Probably only stamp two of these. Again, flex and roll. And then one more over this side. wonder if, oh that looked nice there, angling it that way, could almost fill that little gap there, yes I'm happy with that, one thing to bear in mind your ink will dry slowly on your masking tape so just be careful not to smudge that and then what I'm going to do is come back in with this, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe I know the black's more powerful, I'm going to stamp in black now, but I, I just have a thing about contaminating my, my inks, especially my Versafine, so I want a nice clean stamp. And I'm just going to come in with a couple in the black, just so we've got nice contrast and it helps to build up the layers. I love doing that, stamping in a colour and then just putting a couple of black images. So we'll put one there. And I'm not going to overcolour these. I don't want too much sort of complicated detail. They're such beautiful stamps. I don't want to overdo it. I mean, if you wanted, you could just add one and decoupage it. That would look lovely. And it's a lovely shape to decoupage. It's quite a, an easy shape to cut out. So that's something you could do. Yeah, that's pretty, isn't it? Now, what we're going to do is we'll just pop the heat tool over it, just as I say, because this ink will stay wet. Now, the other good thing is if you use a heat tool, it helps the masking tape come off and it reduces the stickiness of the masking tape. So that's quite a good thing to do as well. But what we're going to do is add the stenciling next. And again, I always turn my work. 
So the stencil I'm going to use, I wasn't sure when I went looking for which stencil would be useful. In this one, it's the Sunflower Power and this one's by Olga and it's number 77. And what I just thought is it's these leaves here. Again, look at the whole of the stencil. You've got various bits, but I'm just thinking again, look how you can just bring it. And I don't want the stenciling to be too heavy. And again, I can move it round, look, decide which ones. Maybe, oh, that looks nice. I think I'm going to go with that. And I can decide how far down I want it. I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to come in with my lighter colour, my crushed olive first. And again, I'm just flicking away from me. I'm only holding the stencil in place. And if I lift up, see that's nice and light, which is what I want here. So what I'll do then is come in with the Rustic Wilderness, the darker colour, and just add a bit of depth. And again, I can lift my stencil up, have a look. Yeah, I think that's nice. I don't think I want to add any more to that. Let's turn that round. Yeah, that's pretty, isn't it? So what we will do is just get my water, my paintbrush out of my water and just pick up. I've got some ink on the mat here. So let's just add a little bit. We don't need a lot. Just a little bit of detail on some of these little, as I say, I don't want to overcomplicate it. But I'm just thinking a little bit of almost structure, a little bit of depth. And I'm not spending ages doing a fantastic watercolouring job, I'm just giving that hint. And again, we'll put some in here. Even these black ones, look, that we've stamped in black, we'll just add some of these little berries. And then what we'll do is, as I've got some ink on my brush here, I'm just going to put the lid on that ink pad. Let's just add a few of the little speckles here. Don't want to overdo it, just a few. Then I'm going to come back in with my heat gun, just for this edge. I think I'm just going to add a little bit more ink with my stencil brush. So I just want to check that that Versafine is dry, because I really don't want to smudge it. So I think I'm just going to bring in just a little bit where that didn't stamp, didn't quite reach to the edge. If I just build up a little bit more colour. I think, especially at the bottom, it'll ground it a little bit. Yeah, that's going to be better. So I'll just wipe this mess up here, otherwise you know what'll happen. I'll put my hand in it and then I'll we'll have green fingers everywhere. Now again, because I've used the heat tool, this tape will come straight off and try Obviously, as I say, the ink will still be wet on there. So I try and always make sure I fold the tape in just so that I don't get any ink on my fingers. I say try. These are just all things that I try and do to stop getting inky fingers. And as you can see, look at that. I think it's so pretty. And I mean, this, you could vary the stamps. You could vary the colour. I mean, what lovely notelets. And that bit of stenciling, for me, I just think is beautiful. Now, I'm just going to add a black edge and I'm going to use my Sharpie pen. You could use any of your, your alcohol markers. I'm just going to use a piece of kitchen roll. I don't want to put my hand in case it's dirty on there, look. And I'm just going to be training myself not to use a ruler. And I found as long as you keep it pressed down, you're okay. So we'll go. For me, this just saves having to cut black card because it's amazing how much card I go through matting and layering. But I do like the black edge just to bring in, especially because we've done that bit of black stamping. Now, 
if I bring a piece of white card just to show you. So look how that black edge really shows up. Now this you could put on a larger card if you wanted, couldn't you? Say you were putting it and stamp a verse there. I mean, that would be beautiful. Maybe even bring a little bit of that stenciling in, into the corners. So again, you can expand it, should you wish to. What I have done is I've stamped my butterfly already and cut it out. And I just used the same colour, the um, Rustic Wilderness. And then I used one of my um, pencils just to add a hint of blue. Now, this butterfly is off. It's the one I keep using at the minute. So this is off Bupasha's new Safari set and that's 532. Now, just to finish off, I want a, a couple of words. Now, we've got some lovely washi tapes and I like this one of Bupasha's and I tend to just cut odd words off it. Now, obviously, it's like you, you've got lots of washi tape to choose from. And again, I know a lot of people like to tear it. I'm afraid I'm one of these. I have to cut it. Something inside my head. <laughs> Harmonious. I think that's a nice word, isn't it? So we'll, we'll add that. Now, what I find useful is to just balance it on. That's a bit sticky. Have I got a pair of scissors? Yeah. Pop it on a pair of scissors like that. And then, so if you've got here any area that say you're not keen on, your word look will look perfect. There we go. And then let's have another word for up here. What else have we got? Blessings. I like that. So let's go for a bit of blessings. Oh, empower. Yeah, let's have a bit of empower. So sad, I actually keep the words that are in between. So we'll have a bit of empowerment and we'll pop that up here. So I might just have to put my head over a bit to check it straight. Where should we go? Should we go there? Yep. And then we can add our butterfly there. So a little bit of our pin flare. Just a 3D glue gel. So I want a flat area in the middle. And then just so my butterfly is a little bit 3D, We'll put a bigger blob at each side and then make sure you twist that up and obviously wipe the end of that. There we go. And then let's just pop that so we can read the Empower. I just need to wipe that up otherwise again I'll be putting my, my elbow in that. And again, we've just got that nice little 3D. I don't want it 3D too much if I'm going to send this. I just want... And lastly, we'll add a few... Just because I like this noise. We'll add a few flicks with our Tosca. Got one of these that comes out very quickly and one that doesn't come out at all. So we'll stop there because that's the one that it comes out very quickly. So there we go. And I just think that's really pretty. As I say, you could alter it up. You could decoupage these. Um... You could, as I say, make a collection, maybe use different different colours. But I just thought it was about time I just embraced green and had to play with green. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to put those side by side. Let me know what you think. And if you make one, anything similar, please tag me in because I love to see what you do. It's so nice that we have this opportunity to share, to spend time together and, and share ideas and designs with each other. And if you use any of these for your Christmas cards, again, I'd love to see those. We really need to get a start on these Christmas cards. I know it's a bit of a bad word, but, you know, let's start early. So I'm going to go now. Love and hugs to everybody. Thank you for all your support and for your friendship. That's the most important thing. Such lovely friends on here. You take care. Bye for now. <laughs>